This is a nice lecture on affinity capture. I'm Zoltan Wiener from the Department of Genetics, Cell and Immunobiology, Samuels University, Budapest, Hungary. Affinity capture is an isolation method based on the specific binding between a surface EV molecule and another molecule, such as an antibody, that is immobilized to solid phase. This results in the separation of specific EV subpopulations. The capabilities of this method are that it is fast, it's an easy method, no costly instruments are required. It results in high specificity and selectivity of EVs of, of interest. It results in low non-specific binding and high yield. Further details will come later in this lecture. There are of course also limitations such as sometimes costly ligands are required, such as antibodies. Several parameters must be optimized for efficient isolation. An example for that is the number of the magnetic beads. Using immunoisolated EVs in functional studies is challenging, and only EV subpopulations are isolated, not all the EVs. This method is not compatible with large volume samples or samples with low EV content. In these cases, pre-enrichment is often required before applying affinity capture. So how does it work? EVs expose specific surface molecules and we have immobilized capture molecules and these immobilized capture molecules bind EVs of interest. What capture molecules can we use? The most widely used markers are of course CD9, CD63, CD81. When using specific markers, EVs derived from specific cell types can be isolated. An example for that is EPCOM positive EVs that can be isolated from cancer cells of epithelial origin. There are also other capture molecules and other affinity capture methods, such as venceramine that binds to heat shock proteins, HSP. Uh, with venceramine, it's possible to isolate HSP positive EVs. The reproducibility and recovery of this isolation is dependent, is dependent on the sample type. Or TIM4 binds phosphatidyl serine. It's possible to isolate EVs with phosphatidyl serine on the surface. These EVs can then be eluted by calcium ion, ion chelators from the beads. Lactins bind to carbohydrates on EVs, resulting in the isolation of specific EVs. The working principle of affinity capture uh, uh, is illustrated on this slide. Now we focus on magnetic beads. This is only one option, and capture may, of course, be immobilized to other surfaces as well. However, you must keep in mind that uh, uh, when using latex beads, uh, 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 then you need many centrifugation steps, and it leads to a less reproducibility. So in this example, we have magnetic beads. These are covered with the capture molecule and the beads bind to specific EVs. Magnet selects then beads with specific EVs and the outcome is beads with specific EVs. The EV recovery depends on the capture target interaction on the percentage of EVs with the selected marker. It also depends on the assay conditions for example, the amount of and size of the bead, the incubation time, sample volume, and importantly, how isolated EVs are detected. Some examples for the EV recovery. When using anti-CD63 coated beads in platelet poor plasma, the authors found a 60% recovery for total EVs and an 86% for small EVs. In case of anti-CD63, and the CD81 and the NTCD9 coated beads using in cell cultures. Uh, the authors found about a 50% recovery from the small EV pellet and a 34% from the medium and large EV fractions. The fractions were prepared in the study by ultra centrifugation. With NT item 1 coated beads, it's possible to obtain about a 50% recovery from small EV pellet and about 70% from the medium EV pellet. With NTCD34 coated beads using in cell cultures, the authors found 
about a 40% recovery. Team for coated beads result, resulted in a 15, 20% recovery. And with agglutinin bound beads, it was possible to get a recovery of about 60%. In some studies, EV enrichment was also uh, 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 experimental, experimentally tested. When using ATCAM positive EVs, the authors found an enrichment of VPS28 level sevenfold compared to yield of centrifugation, and then almost 30-fold uh, compared to density gradient. This molecule is an EV marker. In ATCAM positive EVs, when these EVs were proteomically characterized, the authors found that about 30% of the proteins belonged to the category of plasma membrane proteins. Uh, with Huster centrifugation, uh, only 16% of, protein, of the proteins belonged to the plasma membrane protein category. With NTCD63 coated beads using Implatement 2 plasma, there was a threefold enrichment compared to ultra centrifugation. These results were calculated from protein amounts and EV counts. Some practical information about affinity capture method. Prep purification with other methods uh, is often required when using larger starting volumes of the samples. The required time for the method depends on whether prep purification is used or not. If incubation time is reduced and no prep purification is required, the assay time can be only a couple of hours. However, most authors use an overnight incubation. In some cases, specific magnets may be required. Importantly, the method can be potentially scaled to industrial applications and it can be suitable for clinic applications and diagnostic purposes as well. Many samples can be isolated in parallel tubes, and samples can be directly used in some downstream applications, such as RNA isolation, western blotting, electron microscopy. However, using affinity captured EVs in functional assays is difficult. So what quality controls are required? For example, measuring the number of positive beads before and after isolation, both in the positively and negatively enriched fraction is important. Capturing with an irrelevant protein, such as using an irrelevant antibody, is also required as quality control. Blocking the binding by pre-incubating samples with the capture antibody is also needed if it is possible. Depending on the downstream application, the linear range of separation should be determined. How to report the data? What should minimally be reported to generate reproducible data? Of course, experimental parameters, such as incubation time, temperature, concentration of beads, bead size, simple volume. It's important to report how the concentration of EVs was measured. It critically influences the recovery rate. Controls required for this method are blocking the binding of EVs by antibody, control sample without EVs. Please follow MySelf guidelines, the newest MySelf guidelines. How data should not be reported, some bad examples. Publishing without reporting beat parameters, such as the size, number of beats. Uh, reporting sample volume should be avoided. Interestingly, the purity for contaminating proteins after isolation is rarely described in publications using this method. Some do's and don'ts. The proper mixing of the samples is critical for this method. So using V-shaped tubes is not recommended. The amount of magnetic beads used in this method depends on the downstream applications. For example, for, for, for force cytometry, few beads are usually required to ensure that as many EVs as possible bind onto the bead surface. The incubation time must be determined experimentally, although many authors use an overnight incubation. The isolation with each capture must be optimized for this method. And now about some good examples. In a study, EVs were immune captured from the urine. 
and the authors provided a theoretical model to calculate the maximal binding capacity of the beads, which is extremely important to calculate how many beads you need for your experiments. In another study, the authors uh, uh, focused on EV ICAM1 uh, level, and they carried out a careful analysis of EVs and proved that ICAM1 is an EV protein, and ICAM1 is not only a contaminant by immunocapture method. Direct immunocapture EV isolation from small amounts of clinical samples is also possible. For example, in a study, the authors isolated EVs from 500 microliter urine. So what future developments are required? Novel reproducible methods that ensure the easy isolation of EVs from the capture uh, uh, are required. Commercialization of capture methods for the easy isolation of EVs from beads for functional experiments are also required. Scaling up the number of samples for routine analysis is critical when using this method for clinical analysis. Developing further assays for direct small analysis of small volumes of human samples without pre-enrichment would also be critical uh, if uh, this method is to be used in clinical and diagnostic applications. Many thanks for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and I hope it was also helpful for you. And we wish you good luck for your experiments. Many thanks again and bye bye.